If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear now the words of forgiveness spoken to you and flowing from the cross of Christ. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven all of our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over, over them in him. On the cross, God the Father took your sins and laid them upon his own son, Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus triumphed over sin, death, hell, and the devil. Everything Jesus did on the cross, he did for you. Because of the cross, you are fully and freely forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the words of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last night was Maundy Thursday, and uh, last night we read the words of that psalm, Psalm 22. And as we did that, we stripped the altar of, of all the decorations, or we call them in church, we call them paraments. And so down came the candles, down came the communion elements, down came the white altar cloth with the word joy written on it. And it struck me last night on Maundy Thursday, something that's never really struck me before, that one thing stayed, and that was this candle. If you don't know what this candle is, it's the Christ candle. <clears throat> it has written on the front of it, if you take a look, what looks like a P and an X. In fact, those are the Greek letters chi and rho, the first letters of Christ. This candle stayed here all alone, so gone now from around this candle is the Advent wreath and the candles that we lit in anticipation of lighting this candle for the first time on Christmas. Gone are the palms that decorated this candle on Palm Sunday. Gone tonight from the front of the church is any sign of decoration or celebration, and in the place of those things, we're left with the Christ candle and a crown of thorns. And a wooden cross now with seven candles, but as you probably know, those are not for celebration. They're to give us a visual illustration of our Savior's life slowly draining out of him. By the end of this service, they will all be extinguished. By the end of this service, the Christ candle will have left the sanctuary. Before you leave, it'll come back in. It'll come back in because even on Good Friday, we live in hope. And so don't leave until you see the light come back in. But for now, the Christ candle is up here, and it's up here alone. 
raised up on its sand, suspended between heaven and earth, far from the eternal candle that reminds us of the presence of God everywhere at all times. Just as Jesus was suspended above earth and below heaven, rejected by humans, and the Father's back turned to him. The seven candles down there on the cross, they go out during this service as we read the seven things that Jesus is recorded as saying in Scripture from the cross. And as we read those words, I pray that there will be two words in your mind for you. Because, see, each of the words that's recorded is significant. Each of the words has something for you. The first one's from Luke 23. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgiveness comes through this death and this cross and this Savior and this candle. And on Jesus, the sins that you have committed, the ones that you know and the ones that you have no idea you've even done, all of them are laid. Truly, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Those are the second words. They're the words to the thief on the cross on his dying day. And they're Jesus' words to every Christian on our dying day. Today you will be with me in paradise because of what happened on the first Good Friday. The third words are, woman, behold your son. He says that to Mary. And behold your mother. He says that to John. They show us something about this Savior that's dying. They show us that even as he's dying for our spiritual needs, he cares about our earthly needs. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those are the fourth words from the cross. They're the words from Psalm 22 that we read last night and just now. We call it the cry of dereliction, the cry of abandonment from the cross. And here's the beauty of that cry. Jesus is truly abandoned by the Father so that the worst that could happen to you is that you could feel abandoned even though that eternal candle is for you and for your life as well. That God never leaves you because he left Jesus. I thirst are the next words from the cross. They're recorded in the Gospel of John, a gospel that equates water to life. And on the cross, Jesus gets no water. And yet he says these words just a few verses before water pours out of his side after a Roman spear thrust. Out of his side and into the entire world. The water of life. It is finished. The six words from the cross. Your life is secure because what happened on Good Friday was in God's plan from the very beginning. What happened on Good Friday was something God was moving all of history toward. And he did that for you and for your salvation, for you personally and individually. And finally, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he breathed his last. You get to say those words on your last day. Father, into your hands I commit your spirit, my spirit, because Jesus said them from the cross, because Jesus went there for you. And so tonight, as you hear those words again, as you see these candles go out, as you watch the Christ candle leave the sanctuary, and as you reflect in the darkness and the silence, I pray that what's in your mind are the two words that we focus on this Holy Week, that all of it is for you. Amen.
the first word. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The second word, one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise.
the third word. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. The tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From your presence let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love. The Savior of those who take refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your presence.
the fourth word. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. The words of Psalm 55. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint, and I moan because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me, and in anger they bear a a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness. I would hurry to find a shelter from the raging wind and tempest.
After this, Jesus, knowing that now all was finished, said to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. The words of Psalm 22. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me, wagging their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you I was cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and they cast lots for my clothing. sixth word. 
When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let us pray. Lord, I understand why you were forsaken. It was not because of your sins. It was because of my sins. As I hear you cry out, My God, why have you forsaken me? I realize that I will never have to say those words myself. It was finished. You paid the price for sin once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring me to God. The seventh word. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me. A strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. 
You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation. And the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. They returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment. We pray. Almighty God, we ask you to look with mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross. We have remembered his death and our death to sin. May we look now toward his resurrection and our resurrection. Amen. <laughs> 